Well, anyway, introduce yourself there, Jimmy, and where were you born and reared in the town? Uh, I am Jimmy Egan, yeah. I was born in Wexford Street, actually. Wexford Street, yeah. In 1941. Good. Yeah. And I started a hold, actually, in school. Hold at the school, like. And there was, oh, that was a question I was going to have for you. What was your first memory of it? So there was actually school teams then. Oh, there was indeed, yeah. We, heard, we travelled to Birthfield and Wexford Park, heard the school, Wexford and Scarty. We were at Uros all over like that time. That and what age are you talking there? I'm talking about when you were in the brothers, that had been 10, 11, 12 years of age. That kind of stuff like, you know. Right. Well, that now in itself brings me to another question. You're saying you've travelled to Belfield now. How did you travel back then? Was there buses then or what? No, there was no buses. We used to go, we used to hire a lad by the name of London the wire. Right. He had a big station wagon. he would tell you where he had a paper shop up in where the Gwali is now. The Gwali stores? Yeah. Right. And we went most of the places with him and maybe a car along with the with the wagon like this. Station. And how many would that would fit on the wagon like? Oh yes, it could be uh, the the best part of the team of Yana. Right. Yeah, we sure don't forget we're only twelve and thirteen like you know what I mean. And a trip down a scar I'm only trying to picture this now. There wasn't an awful lot left of the school day, I'd say it was great to go off and play a match. The school day was gone. We we to like get out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no different than any young lads today, I suppose, oh, heading off. No, but the different young lads today are different. They 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 want to get to school. Yeah, yeah. The only thing that we ever and this is the truth now, uh, if you were playing a match First of all, you had to talk off behind the car in the field. You yeah, might get an orange in half time. <laughs> okay. That, that was it now, there was yeah. nothing else. There was nothing available, like, because it wasn't like the art today, they hadn't got the same fundraising and stuff. Or yeah. A couple of men, like, uh, you know, maybe donated the jerseys, and they always had a club, but they wouldn't have had money. Yeah, yeah, and that's... Um, they're not sure. Yeah, asking any for money back then was probably difficult oh, enough if you had... Gosh, yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And tell me, because, you know, even today, uh, another thing we'd often thought of, was there players on your team, like you take now today, if an orange-coloured boots came out, or the yellow boots, you know, was there any lads in your, in your team that always have maybe the, the best of stuff? in my team, including myself, that hadn't got a pair of boots. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. We yeah. always off, often had to borrow, and borrow a pair of stockings. Right, go ahead. That's the truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember going to an Ireland final in 1954, with my mother and father on the train. Okay. And I think it was 84,000 or something at that match. Jamie Mac. I actually couldn't see the match because there was that many adults. And I was only about 12, 13 at the time. Right. And you, were, you couldn't see it. but that many in it, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the day out on the train, like, and they'd get maybe something to eat at that time, like, you wouldn't be going in, you'd have a sandwich, like. Yes. Because you wouldn't have the money to go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody had money that time. But a great day out, though, Jimmy. Ah, it must yeah, have been a... Yeah, it was a great day out. Yeah, yeah. And, like, there's a, there's a good few of you, you brothers and sisters and all. Would the sisters play any camogie? No, any never. Never? No, no camogie that time, anyway. Right, okay. No. And what about the brothers today? Oh, they heard it be all right, yeah. They would have heard it all right, like. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, that's... No, no camogie that time. They never sort of the latter years, like, you know. Yeah, okay. And uh, just I was trying to picture there because I know I know I know some of the brothers and that they would he would have grown up on Air Street. Would that be right. Yeah. And tell me, what was it like playing there in Air Street? It was a rough enough for. Oh, jeez, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> you learnt the game there. We had street leagues at the time. Right. I'm here telling them. I oh, heard tell of them now. Never involved them myself. No, they wouldn't have been all great hurlers, but to tell you the truth, you know you had been in the game. Let's put that way. <laughs> and like I, I know Air Street myself, and it's, and it's it's kind of on a hill. So where whereabouts would it, I know? And I know where the Egans would have uh, the house there. That was really on the bend in the hill. Was it played there, or was it near the bottom? Of this no, it was played on the street, but they were not. And when right. We, when we were even smaller, like, we hadn't got a ball, and we hadn't got a hole. We used to play with a pot stick and, a, and an Andrews tin, squashed up. The Andrews powder, tin you know like the, Andrews, the tin of Andrews. Right, yeah. And that used to get that much hammer with, with pot sticks. <laughs> that's the truth, yeah. And that's what they played with? That's what they played with. Right, and there was no shin guards or hurling hands no, or anything back then? No, no boats, nothing. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. But great crack. Oh, it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So who, who, can you remember who was the king of the hill on that one? Who? Oh, Jesus, there's many kings. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get to the top of yourself as the one of the best? I think so, no. No, no, no. But, uh, no, no, like it was all right, like it was good. Yeah. That was, what they call 
I wouldn't say, but it was cheap for us because we hadn't got any else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I tell you the truth. I shouldn't be telling you all this. You should be asking me all this. <laughs> I know you're all right. This, that's, a, that's how a good interviewer is. Let Lennon t- let him talk I, away. I, I remember going for a county minor trial. And yes. just the truth now. I would have been, I suppose, about at the time, 16 maybe. Okay. And I hadn't got a hold. And my lead I, you know, my lead I had the shop. Yeah, up there at the traffic lights in, on the street. down at Howard Dog with a brand new hold for me. Go away. He did, he got it. But it was great having men like that around. Oh, no, that's, the, that's, what, that's what happened that time. Like, yeah. You know? Being a games promotional officer, we 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 involved with the development squads and that, and how things say you're on about trials. How did that trial go, or what was the process of it? And well, uh, it went very well, and I got on very well as well. I didn't get, the, I didn't make the team, like. Okay. But I was happy enough with myself, like. And. Someone brought you down, to where, where would it have been held? Oh yeah, we were brought down, that was actually, as far as I can remember, in, in Ferns. Ferns, okay. Yeah. And that's now, I'm talking about, like, I, I was in Farnham 41, so I was about, about 16, so it would be 16, 17. Yeah. That time, like. Okay. And the trial itself, just, can, it was a match, like matches, oh, was it, or was oh, there any match, kind of, yeah, right, match, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of former... County Miners actually playing against us as well. Like, right. You know. Okay. I was the only one that actually went that year from here. Right. That's so you were a bit of a... I was the only one that, that was brought. Like. Right. <laughs> Very good. And who did bring you, Jimmy? It was How did you get down to it? Because we cars were, and that wouldn't have been... Oh, there was a car. There was? A job, yeah. Okay. Very car good. The job, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And... Tommy, what you call him, was actually the... He was the... What did you call him? The manager at the time. Tommy Malai. Tommy Malloy. Yeah. Well, what was the manager's role back then? Was there any kind of, was there anything like it is today? I tell you the truth, it wasn't really a manager, it was just a selection committee. Okay. And they were out at the matches and they selected the team like, and there was no what you call a manager. Right. I never was, remember a manager, Auntie. They had to like, there's a lot of stories about that like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sure nearly took over the game though, in, uh, in yeah, one yeah, way. Yeah, but like, that's the way it was. Like, you know, you had two or three lads on a selection committee and they were there at the match. Right. And they saw the performance and picked the team on that basis, like, and that's the way it was, like. Right, okay. How, like, would you know, with all, I'm videoing this now on a mobile phone, and then there's WhatsApp groups, and there's there's all sorts of messages and communication to players and all. How did you get to tell anyone there was a match on, what time, where to be? There must have been some, how was that organised? Well, to tell you the truth, James, I don't know, uh, but at that time, we wouldn't actually be able to use the phone anyway because <laughs> there was no such thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Harley said that there was very few had a house phone. Right. At that time. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the matches, when you went up to training, like you were told there was a match Sunday or Sunday week, and that was it. That was the, and it didn't change. That was the communication. Yes. You know? I was at two o'clock and so on, so on. That yeah, was. And we often turned up for a match. I remember getting out one day, we sat in Duckman. We were hurling. Uh, we just, when we got to the corner here, we used to meet at Bob's Corner to go to Ferns. There wasn't a, there wasn't a full team. Right. And we had to get take time off work to come like, to play. And what happened in that situation then? You had to go ahead like, and play with what you had. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. Maybe you might throw in a lad like that, never heard of a kick football, but just to. You know. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Looking at the modern game at the moment and referees and the different rules coming in and out. If there was a rule that you think this came in that's kind of, I won't say destroyed the game, but definitely you'd, it'd be better if it wasn't there. What would it be? I'd say the yellow card. The yellow card. Yeah. Would you have lasted long on the game yourself with the yellow cards? No, I wouldn't. But to <laughs> tell you the truth, the reason I said the yellow card is because it stops the lad from doing his potential hurling for nothing really. Like If you pull a lad's jumper like or... Yeah, I think that's ridiculous. Okay. I do, honest to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull that ball in. Unless that it's blatant and dirty and, and going to hurt him, like, if you pull his jersey or even trip him, he's going to get a point. Is that not enough, like, without giving him? I don't, but I don't approve him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think, I'm not saying, like, that you, that should be worse than lads and all that, no. Yeah, yeah. But there is the lads. I do any harm either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I suppose, uh, the last thing there now, you have so you have a good few of the grandchildren now are coming up in the game and doing fairly well in it. And I'm sure you've 
you've spoke to him and given a bit of advice just to everybody there what as a, for a young player coming up now what would your advice be for him like oh, no just like putting advice in because i tell you the truth they're brilliant every one of them like yeah all the young lads today they're so fit like and they're so dedicated and they're so into it yeah yeah you know an old lad like me i couldn't say that to him like i wouldn't i wouldn't be in the one field with them even for i often was up there nearly every evening watching the chaps there and they're super fit for a start off. Yeah. And dedicated to training, which we never were like. Yeah. We, we'd be playing a match and hoping it was over <laughs> before you <it'd> collapse. <laughs> and I hate to throw it. Yeah, yeah, me. yeah. No, they're, uh, in fairness, it's gone to a whole new level now, isn't it? The... Ah, sure, Jess, i tell you the truth, champs. They tell me, like, often they're lads saying, oh, they couldn't come near the 56 team in the fight because i tell you the truth. They're better. These lads are so super fit. And I mean, they really are like, look yeah, at yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, and look at the, at the physique of them, like, yeah. Thanks very much, Jimmy. That uh, was a great, and hopefully, that uh, we put it out there anyway. That there'll be a lot of people interested to hear what you had to say. Uh, well, very welcome. Yeah, very yeah, much. yeah. Thanks again, Jimmy. Thank you.